a good day everyone um today uh, we begin our discussion on uh, the topic of wages under the provisions of the labor code and as uh, has been emphasized uh when it comes to uh wages which is a constitutional right of workers let us uh, invite our attention to our a9178 or the Barangay Micro Business Enterprises Act of 2002. Uh, this law that uh, exempts uh, workers from the payment of uh, the minimum wage. Not so much to abuse the workers, but to encourage small enterprises. And uh, not all uh, business enterprises are covered here, only those engaged in production, processing, manufacturing products, uh, agro-processing, as well as trading in services. And the asset is not more than uh, uh, 3 million uh, pesos. Uh, this has yet to be amended, hopefully, so that uh, the coverage may eventually be increased. Now, uh, and as I emphasize, it's not only uh, payment from uh, uh, salaries uh, or minimum wages uh, that are exempt even income tax or income taxes uh, but please take note that this doesn't exempt workers from the or other employers of bmbs from the payment of uh, welfare benefits now they are still bound to pay and of course you have to be registered so that uh, uh, you have to be covered. And the registration is uh, covered both by the DI and the uh, local government uh, units in order that you can avail of these uh, provisions of uh, the BMBE. Now, um, take note, class, that when it comes to uh, the payment of uh, uh, wages of uh, or, or or sometimes we call these salaries. No, uh, uh, the form of uh, wages and salaries are uh, or should be in legal tender either through the payment of check or through ATM and. Uh, uh, Payment of checks or ATM is subject to certain uh, requirements. Now, the purpose here is that uh, the mode of payment should not somewhat inconvenience uh, the uh, the workers. No, that's why there there has to either be a consent, a consent no, if there is no CB authorizing the payment, or there should be a bank facilities. Uh, within so normally uh, employers uh, require the employees to sign a uh, consent form uh, in order that this uh, system may be availed of otherwise it has to be in the form of uh, cash and of course uh, the terms of payment should be should not be more than should not be less than uh, twice a month or two weeks intervals um this again the purpose of which is in order that uh, workers will not be unduly inconvenienced no? because remember class that when workers uh, become entitled to wages uh, they are for all intents and uh, purposes um have already earned it so if you earn something you, it becomes a matter of right and you should not be unduly inconvenienced otherwise it uh, may uh, violate the provisions of the labor code now um aside from uh, the payment of take note that the uh, employer should pay the employees at the proper time no? aside from the proper manner and the uh, period no? Um, uh, no payment should be made in places where you are encouraged to uh, 
spend money, no? Uh, um, uh, like for example, uh, um, the, the rule is that the place of payment should be in the place of undertaking. Oh, only if uh, there is there are exceptional circumstances that payment can be made, made elsewhere. But just the same, this elsewhere should not include clubs, drinking establishments, uh, massage clinic, that's all and other similar places. Now, of course, by analogy, the intent here uh, pertains to places that uh, um, should not encourage uh, workers to spend their money. Although it did not mention like places like uh, malls or groceries and other similar stuff, but um, uh, the term similar places or places where games are employed with sticks of money or things are presenting money, uh, I, I think that would uh, also be included. No? Although, you uh, know, the purpose is places where games are played. So, yung mga, siguro yung mga sugalan, ganyan. No? And um, take note also, class, that uh, um, the employers uh, aren't supposed to interfere with the way uh, uh, employees would like to dispose of their wages. So they cannot encourage them to uh, in, uh, uh, to either engage or invest their money somewhere else. That is also prohibited and we call that non-interference -interfer in the disposal of wages. Uh, likewise, uh, the practices of uh, withholding wages and kickbacks, no? you work at the personnel and uh, you tell the employees, oh, may commission ako dyan, ah. I have commissions. That, can, that should not also be allowed. No? Uh, um, otherwise, uh, that would uh, uh, violate. violate no? the right of workers and uh, take note that the payment of wages should be made direct to the employee uh, so what happens if for example the employer uh, there are employers who have entered into loan transactions and you'd like to ensure that you will be paid can you order management can you order management uh, to uh, release the payment to you because your co-employee has an obligation as a rule that that cannot be done how about if it's the employer himself who has uh, a loan or rather the employee himself has a loan with the employer can you immediately do that again uh, as a rule deductions are not allowed however if it is authorized in writing yeah uh, that that is the the instance that that may be allowed, or if the payment is uh, made to another person also by uh, a court order. Now this is very common in cases of support. So uh, uh, there are instances where a case may be filed against a, a parent who doesn't want to support. And if the court orders that parent to pay the wages, uh, the 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 rule on uh, support uh, allows that uh, the court can order the employer to directly remit the payment to the beneficiary. So, kung meron dito mga may magulang na hindi nagsusuporta pero gainfully employed, uh, and you're a minor. Uh, and you want to secure your support, you can go to court uh, and uh, apply for support and if the court grants it, the court can order the employer of your parent who doesn't want to support you to remit the payment to you directly. Or of course, in case of uh, death, no? Siyempre, 
pinamatay na doon na ibibigay sa heirs ang 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 um, salary no so take note of that uh, other than that i repeat uh the law is clear that uh, there should be non interference of wages okay uh, that cannot also be allowed also yung false reporting na no, pinalalabas na, ni, na binayad hindi naman that shouldn't also be tolerated and allowed now, uh, take note, by the way, of one of the most important provisions under the Labor Code, and this is found under Article 100. Bakit ito 100? 1, 0, 0. This symbolizes something. Yung 1, that is something positive. At meron kang 1. Tapos bigla pang siniro. And then siniro pa ulit. So, uh, because of this, parang nawalang ka. So this is the non-diminution of benefits, no? Kaya Article 100. So in other words, uh, uh, the the law uh, does not allow diminution of benefits, no? Uh, both supplements uh, included also. Uh, later on, I'll discuss what supplements are. Now, uh, but note that uh, the principle of non-diminution pertains to any benefit and supplement no? being enjoyed by employees. Now, uh, of course, this should be read in conjunction with the present uh, uh, situation. There is a memorandum or advisory issued by Doe that allows employers and employees to agree to the suspension of certain benefits because of the pandemic. Now, this is an extraordinary situation. That's why somehow, uh, in a way, no, this Article 100 is somehow being suspended, although there, there are issues here. But then again, to my mind, uh, um, because of the extraordinary circumstances and provided that the employers are not exploiting that um, labor advisory that labor advisory is uh, as good as uh, you may sure um, notwithstanding the fact that this is a mandate of the constitution to protect the workers and to afford them uh, full protection now uh, what are supplements now the supplements uh, by uh, uh, by the way, before I forget, I'll take note also that uh, uh, not the, the benefits that are included here are not just the salaries and wages, but it also includes other social welfare benefits. Now, uh, what are these um, supplements and facility uh, supplements? Now, supplements must be distinguished from facilities. Now, um, supplements, uh, if you Strictly look at the definition pertains to extra remuneration or special privileges given to the workers over and above ordinary earnings or wages. These supplements uh, can be considered as such as long as uh, these are solely for the benefit of the workers. But if this form of supplements is actually beneficial to the workers, but mainly beneficial to the employers, then it's no longer considered supplement, but this would be regarded now as facilities, in which case facilities, uh, which are items of expense necessary for the laborers and his family's existence, would uh, no longer be considered uh, part, uh, rather, rather uh, this, this, I'm sorry, I, I'll rephrase now. When, when you talk Supplements, uh, so, so supplements uh, are necessary for the workers' uh, everyday existence. So, if, if sabihin, whether they they work or not, this should benefit them. Now, uh, and um, uh, this extraordinary uh, earning. Uh, 
it should be for their account because whether work or not, uh, they need this. So for example, yung mga meals, no? Meals can be regarded as supplements, therefore they are chargeable to the workers' benefits. Uh, rather than chargeable to the workers' wages. Why? Because whether they uh, are employed or not, they need this. No? For example, nga, food. So if there is a, a food, uh, a little food subsidy, as long as it's reasonable, uh, for example, ang average na meal is uh, 100. And then yung 50 subsidized ng employer, yung 50 chinarchy employer, employee that is allowed why because whether they work or not they have to eat now yung facilities this is different in a way they are also beneficial to the workers but uh, this is mainly uh, um, uh, i'm sorry uh imagine nalito ako yung supplements uh, constitutes extra remuneration. These are uh, the this could be charged to the, the this this uh, should not be charged to the workers while uh, facilities on the other hand form part of the wages so um uh yun, no uh so yung sup yung supplements whether uh, they like it or not, uh uh ano rin yun, uh, uh parang they also benefit from it but if they work the employers give them that privilege that supplement uh hindi na pwede charge now yung facilities they are also necessary but uh if the employers uh, uh charge it to the employees then that can uh, that can be chargeable no so yung facilities are chargeable yung supplements are not uh chargeable so yung supplement parang sino supplement ng employer yung pangangailangan ng employee at binibigay ito libre hindi ito pwede i-charge sa employee kung hindi ito talaga charge now yung facilities if charge ito necessary pa rin ito sa employee employee but since uh, these are also chargeable to the wages for the account of the employee uh, 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 a classic example of this would be uh, uniforms no when do you now distinguish whether a uniform is a supplement or a facility? Kung everyday ang empleyado kailangan naman nagsusot ng damit. So pwede nating sabihin na, well, this is necessary, this should uh, be considered as facilities. No? Kasi whether nagtatrabaho ka o hindi, kailangan mo ng damit. Pero kung halimbawa yung damit mo naman, eh tanging uh, maisusot mo lang sa employer mo, for example, you work in a funeral parlor at uh, you have the logo of a kabaong or a casket. So no matter how beautifully embroidered your barong is, if uh, this is only useful in your workplace, then uh, this cannot be considered as a facility. Rather, this would be a supplement. Therefore, it's not uh, chargeable to the workers but if the uniform is something nice you can wear it elsewhere as long as the amount is reasonable then you can charge it to the employees now so how about food now young food is also the same case by case uh, uh, basis no but uh, again food kasi whether you work, you need it. So as long as it's reasonable, it can also be charged. It classifies as uh, facilities. Now, how about your board and lodging? Now, your board and lodging, whether you like it or not, you have to sleep somewhere. But if the board and lodging is uh, mainly within the premises of the company, 
uh, and it is the company who will actually benefit from it, especially on call. To my mind, that would not be uh, considered facilities already, but that would constitute as a supplement because it supplements now the employer. But if it is located uh, in a neutral place, probably, then I would say that that could classify as facility. And especially if the worker has a choice. But if it is management who will mandate now you have to stay here, that would constitute already a supplement. Now, this could also be uh, considered in the light of uh, this pandemic where workers are, are um, are encouraged to stay within the premises. So if a pre premises is provided by the employer, this would not be considered uh, as a um, somewhat uh, supplement, but uh, it could uh, be consider considered as a, uh, well, well, this could be considered Rather, this could be considered as a supplement if it mainly benefits the employers. Um, but on the other hand, it could also be considered as a facility because workers would not travel. Now, how do we treat this? You know? uh, well, given the situation, I think this should be treated more of uh, a supplement rather than facility, you know, because I think it's the employer who's mainly benef benefiting from it. In the first place, the workers do not have a choice if there are no uh, transport uh, available. So in the absence of transport availability, um, it is the management who is encouraged to find ways. So I think uh, in this uh, uh, aspect, uh, should be chargeable to uh, the employer because it can be regarded uh, as a supplement, supplement to the uh, nature of the work. Now, um, please take note of ever the ruling in the case of SLL versus NLRC. Thus, if so provided freely by for the purpose of maintaining the efficiency and health of its workers while they are working at their respective projects, meals such as meals and lodging, the same may not be deducted from wages. So even if, you know, food no, are supposed to be, and, and lodging are supposed to be facilities necessary for the employees, uh, they should uh, not be chargeable. And also, before the value of facilities can be deducted, the following requisites must be present. No proof of such facilities that are customarily furnished by the trade. Second, the provision of deductible facilities must be voluntarily accepted in writing. And this is crucial, no? Because in many cases, walang right in writing. So, dun nagkakaproblema. Lalo na mga small-scale small businesses where uh, workers are usually stay in Later on, so sabi nila, eh, bumaba sa minimum wage ang sahod namin. Tapos sabi naman ng employer, eh, hindi, pinapa-stay ko kayo eh. eh. kaya lang, if there are no written uh, uh, acceptance, that, that becomes a problem. And of course, it has to be reasonable. Hindi ang po purpose nito, hindi yung pinagkakakitaan mo pa yung, yung employer. No? So, take note of that. No? Now, um, we again uh, read no, that uh, as a rule also, wage deduction is uh, not allowed, meaning uh, you cannot just deduct any amount from the wages unless this, uh, this fall under the exceptions. Some earlier exceptions we mentioned, no? may written authorization. Now, another exception would be yung mga payment ng mga insurance premiums sa social welfare benefits. And of course, if you have a labor union, um, that could also form uh, part of the exception or there is a court order. Now, um, how about um, those workers who may have committed um, uh, 
damage to the employer na nakabasag ka ng pinggan and all or nabasag mo yung property o nasira mo yung uh, yung property ng hub. Can that be deducted to your wages? Now, take note that uh, deductions for loss or damages may be allowed, but these are subject to certain guidelines. Uh, number one would be due process. So there must uh, be a clear showing that the person responsible for the loss or damage is the employee. Now, example of this is yung mga drivers. No? Kung siya yung may kasalanan, nabangga yung sasakyan. Kung may deductions man na babayan uh, for the insurance, pwede i-charge sa kanya. But again, yung due process is important. There must be opportunity to be heard. The employee should be given reasonable opportunity to show cause why deduction should not be made. Uh, likewise, the amount also should be fair and reasonable. So, kung baba, it's an electronic item which has been with the company for 10 years. Let's say the company bought it 10 years ago with X amount of money. Now, uh, nasira because of the negligence of the employee. employee. Now, this could be deductible provided that uh, the amount is uh, fair and reasonable. So, the reasonable uh, 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 amount uh, constituting the depreciation must also be considered. Hindi mo naman pwede i-charge sa pagkakabili mo ng brand new. Why? Because here, in effect, you are already taking advantage of the employee and that is not supposed to be allowed. So remember, afford the workers full protection. So that is what is important. And uh, finally, whatever deductions that you can be allowed to do, it has to be gradual. And how can it be gradual? Only the amount, not more than 20% of the wages in a week may be deducted. So in effect, 20% 20 uh, of the employee's wages, no? Ang pwede mo lang i-deduct, no? Hindi pwede yung buong sweldo babawasan mo na. Kasi again, the intent here is not naman to totally disadvantage the workers no? or make him fully answerable to the full extent of the law, but, you know, give him time to pay for it. So that's why there's this 20%. No? And of course, uh, uh, take note that uh, uh, the non-interference in the disposal of wages is so regulated by Labor Advisory 11. Now, yung mga Labor Advisory na napakadami nito, I invite you to visit if and when you become uh, part of the Human Resources Department of your company, I invite you to visit uh, the Department of Labor website where you can find all of this. No? So, the, the same principle, uh, I think we've highlighted this. Uh, authorized by law dapat and uh, written authorization. Now, ito yung medyo importante rito. Meron kasi mga employers na nagre-require no, ng uh, mga cash deposits, no, yung mga security agency. Kasi anong purpose nito? Yung mga guards, siyempre binibigyan mo ng barel. Eh, paano kung basta-basta nanakawin or pawawalain and all. So, kailangan din protected ang, uh, ang management. And under the, this advisory, pwedeng deductan din sila ng cash deposit. No? Pero, not, again, not also more than 20%. And upon separation, dapat ibabalik sa worker yung uh, sa uh, security e-guard yung cash deposit niya. And there's a period of not more than 10 days. No? So take note of that. Also, yung ito, this is also important yung sa mga construction company. No? Before, uh, hindi clear kung yung mga company uniforms uh, pwedeng uh, mag-deposit to sila. Kasi ganun din, bibigyan sila ng mga PPE, yung personal protective equipment. Uh, and then, uh, nag-charge. No? Uh, now, this can also be interpreted in the light of the ongoing pandemic because in the ongoing pandemic, 
uh, deductions uh, by hospitals may sometimes be employed for the PPE also. Pero the rule is clear, no? Uh, when it comes to allowable deductions, these items cannot be uh, considered no? as a uh, part. Even yung sa cooperative, yung capital share or capital build-up. So, ibig sabihin, kung yung mga employee mo, member din ng co-op, dapat sila yung ipasweldohin mo muna. Pagkabigay mo ng sweldo, ibibigay nila sa yung share nila, mga membership nila, etc. And uh, other training fees and deductions. No? So, take note of that. And uh, this circular was uh, promulgated uh, by former Secretary Baldo. Prospective application. No? And of course, the purpose of coming up this guideline, of course, is not really to encourage to uh, 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 diminish the salary, but just to regulate. Now, the other uh, item that is uh, equally important are wage-related benefits. Yes, there are so-called wage-related uh, benefits. No. Now, um, uh, under these uh, guidelines, well, this is a bit of a rather technical uh, matter because this involves the computation of uh, wage-related benefits. So, for example, uh, Overtime pay. Now, um, overtime pay is an additional compensation for work performed beyond eight hours. Now, this should also be considered in the light of a situation where workers are only made to work for six hours but paid equivalent to eight. If such is the practice, then employ employers uh, must pay any excess work you know, for those which are covered. Now, uh, earlier, we've um, presented those who are not covered by the conditions of employment. So take note of those, yung mga field personnel, manager, uh, supervisory workers, they are not covered. So wala silang overtime pay. Now, um, this is a matter that is rather technical and sometimes quite compute confusing, no? Yeah, 25% ordinary days, 30% rest day. Now, um, uh, ang tawag for those uh, overtime pay rendered on a special day or rest day is called premium pay. So, ito ordinary days to, no? So, pag ordinary days 25, pag uh, uh, special days are 30%. So, you call it... Uh, uh, premium pay. Uh, ito naman, uh, yung sa uh, premium pay falling on special day or rest day, uh, may additional pay pa nga, no? as I said, no? um, 30% pagka uh, uh, special day. Tapos if it falls on the seventh day, yung rest day mo, magiging 50%. So, Ano itong mga special days in yan, Ninoy Aquino, or Saints Day, etc. So, uh, this is uh, quite rather, as I said, no, rather confusing. No? Kasi aside from the premium pay, meron ka pang tinatawag na holiday pay. Now, uh, yung holiday pay naman, uh, if unwork, you're entitled to to its uh, payment. Ibig sabihin, kahit di ka nagtraba pa sa sweldo, hang ka. Kasi ito yung naman yung regular holidays, no? Uh, na uh, kahit temporary ka, probationary, you're entitled to it. Now, pinag, pag pinagtrabaho ka pa, magiging 200% pa. Ang daming situations, no? Now, this regular holiday is uh, provided by law. Ito yung New Year's, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, etc. Bonifacio, etc. Madami pa. Basta may law at dineclare na, na regular holiday, then it is a regular holiday. Now, this very confusing system of uh, uh, 
determining uh, overtime pay. Now, this could be addressed already by this sample computation issued by Toll. Now, I invite your attention to this very important sample computation. Because here, this um, uh, illustrates one, two, three, four, five. A to E, five situations for the payment of overtime pay. Now, this would already address yung mga premium pay, holiday pay, nandito na yung mga situations. Now, what I want you to do is to take a look at each one of them. And after this, uh, you would be able to learn how to simply compute. Now, what would be the system of doing this? Now, yung first one, uh, overtime pay uh, for ordinary work. No, yan. Ordinary work. Now, what is this indicative of? Yung first situation, this would be the simplest situation of all so in other words if the overtime is rendered on an ordinary day then the uh, overtime pay this is only the overtime pay is equivalent to 25 percent of the hourly rate or 125 percent so you just choose either 25 or better use the 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 uh, uh, multiplier one 125% or 1.25. So in other words, what you do is to compute for the hourly rate. So here in this example, 89 pesos per day divided by 8. So the hourly rate is 11 pesos more or less. Now this 11 pesos, you just multiply it by 1.25. And the result will be 13 pesos. And that would be the hourly rate. Now this applies in an ordinary situation. Ordinary situation when uh, it's simply an overtime pay rendered on an ordinary day. So yun na yun. Actually, ang premise nito yung 25% nga kasi ordinary. Now, the second situation presented is an overtime service rendered for work on a rest day. Ito yung rest day mo or non-working special holidays. These are days that are declared by the government as uh, no work. Now, if pinag-work ka pa rin kahit no work na siya, or rest day mo pinag-work ka pa rin, this time, so let's not complicate things. Now, sometimes, kaya nagkakagulo if things gets complicated. So, hindi lang yan sa status ng Facebook magulo but even in other items. So how do we simplify simplify things? So if in the first one we use 125%, this time kung it falls on a day, which is also your rest day or non-working day, then we simply use 169% or 1.69. Wait lang, class. I'm trying to... Ayaw atang gumana nitong pencil. Ah. So, ayan. Uh, 169%. Uh, 169% or 1.69. So, uh, take notes of that. No? Ayan. 169. So, um... Ayaw gumana plus. So, yung first situation, 125 or 1.25. Second situation, 1.69. So, dito naka-integrate na yung 30%. So, there's a computation to that. Kaya naging 169 yan. If you want to further go into the details, then you can take a look at the manner as to how it was arrived at. But the more important point here is the 169. Third situation, 
overtime pay for work on a rest day which is also non-working special holiday. So rest day mo na, naging non-working day pa siya dahil bumabagyo, pinagtrabaho ka pa. Now, if that be the case, so meron tinatawag nga ng mga premium pay which we earlier discussed, etc. Now, again, things will be complicated kasi 30% of the hourly rate plus uh, may ano ka pa, may uh, 50% ka pa, etc. And all that. This time, just don't complicate matters. We use 195%. So sa first one, 125. Sa second one, 169. Sa third situation, 195 or 1.95. So you just, again, get the hourly rate multiply it by 1.95%, then you get the hourly rate for overtime pay rendered on a rest day, which is also a special holiday. Okay, so uh, this is the third situation. But there is also that fourth situation. And what would that be? Your overtime pay is surrendered not only on your, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, the, the overtime pay, the fourth situation, is rendered on a holiday or a regular holiday. Now, if this be the case, pinagtrabaho ka pero regular holiday, remember sa regular holiday, 100% ang bibigay sa'yo kung hindi ka magtrabaho. Pero kung magtrabaho ka, 200% na. Now, there's also some form of computation. Eh, overtime pa. So, may 30% ka pa. So, here, instead of 195%, the multiplier use is 260%. Yeah, yung gumana na. So, yung isa, 195. Yung isa, oh, yung isa, ah, uh, 169 yung isa, 125, no? So, itong fourth situation, 260% or 2.6. So, uh, these are very important items. Why? Because sometimes if you're the employer and you do not look at the figures, you look at the, the result, patrabaho ka ng patrabaho. Ikaw naman, instead of complaining as an employee, before you complain, then you look at also the computation. Kasi imagine, pag nagtrabaho ka ng regular holiday, ang swell mo, 260% is entitled ka sa overtime pay. That's a lot of uh, cash. Imagine if your hourly rate is um, 100 pesos. So instead of being paid just 100 pesos, eh, magiging times 2.6, so almost 300. And imagine kung ang, uh, kasi, uh, remember, ano na yun? Uh, 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 kumbaga, uh, yung kung, kung il, ano yung early rate mo nun, yun na yun. Dahil in excess, there, you're not supposed to work. Eh? So, overtime na siya. So, kung 8 hours ka nagtrabaho, times 8 siya. So, ganun kalaki. So, before... Compelling your workers to um, work their asses, sorry for the word, you have to, to reflect on the cost. No? So, kaya merong cost analysis, although I think this is covered by another course in, in accounting. Ano? So, now, the fourth situation is, well, uh, the highest of them all. If it happens to be your rest day and it's also a regular holiday and you are made to work on your regular holiday, what happens to that? Well, this time, take note that the, the percentage that you need to pay would be equivalent to 338% or 3.38. So almost times four, no? Or times three, almost times three and a half. So if 100 Yan, 100 pesos ka. Instead of being paid 100 pesos per hour, you'll be paid 338 pesos. And imagine if that's you were made to work for 10 hours. So for one day, you will be paid 3,380. 
Now, 3,380 for uh, an ordinary wage earner is a lot of money. Although, of course, if you are a lawyer, eh, well, you can charge a uh, uh, consultation fee for as low as 1,500 to as high as uh, 10,000 pesos probably or 5,000. Um, but, of course, uh, well, that requires also a lot of things no? before you become a lawyer. But if you're not yet a lawyer, you're a worker. 3,000 pesos per day spells a lot of difference. No? So that's why, again, if you end up working um, in the HR department of a company, then these things you have to take into account. Hindi yung, hindi, pabayaan mo sila magtrabaho, etc. Why? Because, again, this could translate into uh, a lot of expenses for the company. Siyempre, kung ikaw naman yung nasa management, eh, you have to be uh, considerate and take into account the interest of your company. No. Now, I have a question. Suppose this percentages, management decides to give higher. For example, on ordinary overtime pay, eh, gusto niya 50% ang ibigay. So instead na 125%, eh, more than that, gusto niya 250% time ang denominator. Can that be possible? Of course, we go back to our discussion on standards that anything over and above, and as long as it's for the benefit of the workers, that is better. And that is permissible. That is, uh, that is why stipulated overtime rates are allowed as long as they are over and above what is provided for by law. Take note of that. Now, uh, how about what are the incidents no? uh, really related to these other monetary wages? Well, there may be instances that you will be absent no? prior to a holiday. Now, uh, there are consequences to that. No? For example, the day before the holiday, nag-absent ka na without pay. Even if you ask for that, uh, that has uh, consequences. Why? Because the purpose here is to discourage the man employees to take advantage of the holidays. Lalo na kung makikita nilang long weekend, di na sila magtatrabaho. Pag ganun ang ginawa mo, hindi ka na entitled on the holiday pay no? unless uh, you work on the regular holiday. So take note of that. Otherwise, yung mga workers, hindi na man na magtatrabaho. Uh, take note that the policy of the state is not just to protect the workers, but also management, diba? Sabi nga natin, industrial peace. Now, also, employers shall grant the same uh, percentage of the holiday pay as the benefit granted by other competent authority, uh, whichever is higher, you know? Uh, no, if, because, for example, nakalive ka dahil may maternity leave ka, babayaran ka pa din. It's as if pumasok ka kasi entitled ka naman sa leave na yun. Or where the day prior to holiday is a non-working day in the establishment or scheduled rest day, eh, hindi mo naman kasalanan yun kung naging holiday bago mag another holiday or rest day mo yun. That's different. You should also be entitled to, to pay. Now, there are instances, no, yung Holy Thursday and Good Friday, what are the uh, indications of this? Well, if there are two successive holidays, you also do not absent yourself. Kasi magiging tatlong araw ng bakasyon mo yun. No? So if that be the case, you will not be paid for both. No? If you absent on the day immediately preceding the first holiday, unless you work on the first holiday, in which case you are entitled to a holiday pay on the second holiday. Naintindihan? Sabihin, if there are two successive holidays, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, on Wednesday, you have to be present. Now, if you will be absent on Wednesday, you have to work on Thursday to be entitled to pay on Friday. Okay? Okay. 
Now, another related monetary benefit is the night shift differential. Now, uh, aside from what we have computed on the excesses, etc., uh, if the work rendered is between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., do not forget the so-called Dracula Doctrine. In which case, what is this not Dracula do Doctrine? This is also known as the graveyard shift. You become entitled to a night shift pay. Why is this called Dracula Doctrine? Who else works from 10 p.m. and 6 a.m.? Well, generally only Dracula works between this period, no? 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. So you have to pay the employee additional, this is additional 10% of whatever wage she or he may be entitled to. So kung overtime na yun, eh, plus 10%. Kung hindi naman siya overtime, 10% uh, percent. And this is common to those who work in call centers, no, where they have to render service between this period. Uh, now, maybe a question that would arise here would be those who work from home. Uh, would they still be entitled to this? Now, if there's a way to monitor, lalo na call center, kahit work from home, in my opinion, the worker should still be entitled. No? Kasi yung aros, oras naman, there's a stamp, time stamp. Lalo na kung obviously the the hours rendered or the the the, the jurisdiction service you know are functional only within this period eh, meron pa rin. but that should still be a given now another related monetary benefit that the workers are entitled to is the service incentive leave and what is the service incentive leave now those workers who rendered at least one year are entitled to a 5 day leave with pay. Now, ito, assuming walang mga leave credits na ibinibigay ang management because there are leave credits that are given and um, it also is equivalent to five days or even more, then that leave credits take this place. Now, the more interesting question is, does the worker really need to work for one year to be entitled? Well, at the onset, generally, yes. But suppose the worker resigned or is removed from work within that same year. Hindi niya pa natapos yung one year. Entitled ba siya? Now, again, in my opinion, considering that the five days presupposes a one year service, by analogy, if the worker already rendered service for at least six months, so meron na siyang 2.5 na na-earn. So remember, earn benefits. So yung one year, Nakakalating taong ka na, may na-earn ka na na 2.5. So, if you get separated within that period, in my opinion, you have to be given at least that 2.5 uh, uh, cash equivalent. Kasi ang, ang service incentive leave is cash convertible. Kung hindi siya convertible to cash, hindi siya pwedeng i-replace. Baba, sick leave lang siya na, na forfeited pag hindi mo na-avail. That's different. So, take note of that. No? Now, another uh, wage-related benefit, of course, is the maternity benefit. Yan. Do not wish to avail of this once you get employed. No? Uh, nowadays, it's a rather uh, um, big issue no? if you want to have a family. No? Uh, Hindi naman pwedeng puro forma at puro love. Hindi ka makasurvive. No? Kailangan medyo stable din. Uh, but then again, if for some reasons you get pregnant, whether you're married or you chose not to be married, so that is also possible. Do not get married for the wrong reasons. A lot of people end up uh, regretting not regretting having a child, but regretting getting married. No? Masarap ang may anak, pero medyo mas challenging ang may asawa. Sabi nga nila. So, at of course, at the end of the day, magastos ang annulment. No? Unless abogado kayo, your friends assist you. 
ay hirap. No? But then again, yung pagiging ina, uh, hindi man maiiwasan niya kung talagang gusto mo nang maging mami. So, you have privileges under the law. So, if you spend 12 months uh, period prior to childbirth or even miscarriage, and you get maternity benefits. Uh, 60 days for normal delivery and 78 days for uh, C-section. Now, um, <coughs> take note that uh, uh, there are um, efforts, no? Uh, to expand the maternity benefits in the Philippines, no? Uh, um, there are laws that have been passed uh, to include, the, or rather to increase, no? And uh, by reason of which, uh, on uh, May 2019, uh, Republic Act 11210, no, or an act increasing the maternity leave period to 105 uh, days have been affected. No? So, uh, for this purpose, there is this uh, labor advisory implementing the Republic Act 11 to 10. So I invite your attention to, I'll be sending a copy of these uh, rules, no? uh, which uh, practically increase the coverage of uh, uh, maternity benefits and even uh, uh, solo parents. No? whether you work in the private or public sector. Now, the rule is clear that uh, it is 105 days. So, yung dating 60 days na increase na sa 105 days. No? But uh, regardless of the mode of delivery, and there's an additional uh, 15 days if you're a solo parent. Now, kung uh, miscarriage, it's 60 days. So, na yung dating uh, 60 days na retain, pero sa miscarriage lang. Now here, it is actually the government who will be paying for your maternity leave because this is a form of a welfare legislation. The employer will only advance. No? Uh, so ngayon, 105 uh, uh, days na. No? Uh, now, there is also uh, unextended maternity leave. So, pwede yung pang extend another 30 days, but it will no longer be paid. No? And you have to send the notice to your employer in writing at least 45 days before. No? Uh, now, um, this is uh, uh, the option given to the mothers. No? Um, kasi mahirap din naman na maging ina, no? Hindi, hindi biro ang lalo na if uh, first time mother ka, mahirap, no? Although may mga mother who don't act as mothers, no? But uh, those who do, eh talagang it's a big sacrifice, no? Uh, imagine madidisfigure ka and all, ah... Uh, uh, aside from the aesthetic and daming mga changes, no, hormonal changes that uh, women should uh, have to deal with. So it's really difficult. So the law uh, favors them by uh, giving additional or extended uh, uh, pay, uh, not extended leave rather, of 30 days, aside from the 105 days. No? So yung 105 days, kahit normal or C-section, uh, is and uh, under the circumstances, um, um, employers uh, have to process this. Now, there are procedural requirements. I will invite your um, attention to this. Uh, uh, aside from these uh, circumstances, no, even uh, women in informal economy, no, voluntary members, 
na mga simpleng ano, may mga makukuha rin silang uh, benefits, no? Um, of uh, maternity leave credits, no? Um, now, take note, no? Even what's good about this new rule or law for that matter, the implementing rules provide an allocation of maternity leave credits. So, ito, kung siyempre ang pagiging ina, eh, hindi naman responsibilidad lang ng nanay. In fact, pero tayong tinatawag na paternity leave benefits. No? So, itong, itong paternity leave uh, uh, benefits, uh, uh, generally seven days for the fathers and non-convertible to cash so that the father can attend to the mother. Now, take note that in the maternity leave, uh, the new maternity leave, the mother can allocate yung seven days niya na na leave credit sa asawa niya na para magiging 14 days in effect. So, at least two weeks man lang na, na nandun yung yung uh, yung tatay. No? Although, sometimes I am surprised no, that uh, I have uh, seen uh, cases no, where fathers are neglect no they neglect their children so i cannot imagine that there are fathers who actually can do that no na to to neglect their responsibility towards their children hanggang doon lang sila sa paggawa ng bata no uh, pagdating doon sa uh, pag-aalaga oh, medyo ano nakakalungkot that there are fathers like that no but the least you could do if you cannot deal with the mother is at least be a responsible father. Uh, and of course, in every issue, always remember that uh, you take away that issue no, between the partners or the father and the mother when it comes to the children. So the children should be protected mostly. So they should be um, uh, fireproof, no? Dapat inaalagaan ng mga bata. Although, of course, uh, uh, reality is someday, pagka malalaki na yung mga anak mo, lalo na kung nasa senior high school na, ganyan, minsan wala nang pakialam sa'yo, ayaw kang samahan kumain mag-lunch, may mga sarili ng um, barkada, ganyan. So, minsan mag-isa ka na lang. Ganun talaga ang buhay. But at least, make sure that you, be, you yourself become a good father, no? And uh, part of that, of course, you avail of the seven days uh, leave with pay uh, for the first for deliveries of the lawful wife. No, take note, only the lawful wife. The unlawful wife, uh, so to speak, uh, are not entitled. So, mahirap ka mag extend ng parangay. No? Kaya mahirap talaga yan. No? Sakit ng ulo yan. Kaya dapat uh, you have to be careful. Now, take note, by the way, that when it comes to the Paternity Leave Act of 1996, employers who will not uh, abide by that uh, may be held liable. No? Pwedeng makulong. So, hindi pwedeng, ano, hindi pwedeng uh, i-disregard no? yung kanyang uh, duty. Now, re, uh, correlatively, when it comes to the amended maternity benefit, ganun din. Meron ding penalty clause na fine of 200,000 or imprisonment of not less than 6 years. So ito mas light no sa lalaki. Ewan ko ba bakit ganoon ang batas pagka ang naape ay mga lalaki ang 10, 30 days to 6 months. No? Pero pag babae yung sa maternity benefit 6 years and below ang penalty to 12 years no. Uh, six, uh, from six years and one day to 12 years. So take note of uh, this. No? So again, I invite your attention uh, to look at RA11210. Hindi pa na-incorporate lang dito yan sa PowerPoint. No? But uh, that is deemed uh, impliedly uh, covered. Now, aside from these welfare benefits related to monetary benefits, so take note ito. 
Huwag naman kayong mangarap maging solo parent. But if you're a solo parent, you can also avail of certain privileges. No? Uh, ano ba ang solo parent? No? This is a, a, a person who is left alone with the responsibility of parenthood. So if you are left alone, although not necessarily lonely, uh, with the responsibility of parenthood, then you are a solo parent. But being a solo parent, you have to register in your barangay, and then I think in the locality, you'll be given an ID, etc. So if you give birth as a result of rape, no, or crimes against chastity, or your spouse is dead or detained no or mentally incapacitated uh, or no ito, if you are legally separated or for at least uh, one year or your spouse has abandoned you or you're unmarried no or you solely provide parental care uh, or even as a legal guardian you're a solo parent no or even if, for example, estudyante ka pa lang, or not really estudyante, law student, or what, but if you are assume, if you assume the responsibility of the family, no? uh, dahil wala akong magulang and all that, no? then you are a solo parent. So, hindi ka kinakailangan maging parent. No? Um, now, a uh, child here, therefore, uh, includes any living person who is under 18, or even if you're over 18, but you are not of sound mind, then you are a child for legal purposes. And uh, the, war, the, <coughs> the one taking care of you, either your parent or your guardian, is uh, uh, the one responsible for you. And in which case, you can avail of a parental leave credit of seven working days with pay, provided you've rendered at least one year of service, and of course you inform the employer, you have this solo parent ID, etc. No, but this is not convertible to cash. Hindi pwedeng sir entitled ako pero ikakash ko na lang. No? The purpose here is for you to uh, take good care of your child or children. And aside from the parental leave credit, you can also ask for a flexible work schedule. Example, kung wala wala kang ibang pwedeng gawin ano uh, pwede kang mag-ask ng ng ano ng uh, uh, flexible work schedule and take note no uh, if your child uh, becomes of age or you change in your status naging nagkasawa ka na then wala wala ka ng benefit no and you cannot be discriminated take note now aside from uh, this, meron din yung mga victims of domestic violence or violence against women and children. No? Unfortunately, uh, this law will only be applicable to women and children. So why? Because uh, BAUSI or the anti-violence against women and children only protects them. And uh, this brings us to, well, uh, in relation lang as a side issue in the paper that I defended in my Masters of Law, uh, called for an all-inclusive uh, law that would benefit all victims of domestic abuse, whether you're man, woman, transgender, uh, male, female, bisexual, whatever. If you're a victim of domestic violence, you're supposed to be credited or provided help, assistance by law. But right now, only those victims of 9262 can benefit from this. And, and of course, uh, by definition, uh, these are series of acts committed by any person against a woman with whom the person has or had sexual dating relations, etc. So kahit hindi ka kasal, you're a victim of domestic violence, you're a woman, or even the children and all that, uh, you can be considered as a victim. And if you are a victim, then you are entitled to benefits. Uh, entire equivalent to up to 10 days, no? So take note of this, no? Lalo na kung nakakuha kang protection order sa court and all. Uh, tapos takot ka pa rin pumasok dahil yung, yung partner mo, baka abangang ka and all. It could even be extended and the extension doesn't uh, provide any limit, no? So take note of that, no? Uh, and uh, it can only be 
a belt of for medical and legal concerns and only again in favor of women. No? I am not undermining the rights of women. I recall I was asked by this when I defended my paper and I said that my paper is not about um, limiting the rights of women. Women are marginalized. They have to be protected. But so as the other victims. Kasi nga, uh, not only women can be victims of domestic abuse. May mga partners na women who are also not as you know, loving as other abusive men. So they may mga because of the macho image, no? Madaming lalaki na hindi nagre-reklamo. Maybe it's a good uh, point of discussion with your parents, no? So you ask your dads, dad, dad, uh, is it true that uh, those that may be victims of domestic violence are not only women, di ba? Lalo na kung yung women are very controlling. So they should also serve as a guidance. No? Do not control people. Whether you're a man or a woman, it's wrong to control people. Kailang maging loving lang tayo. Dapat, uh, sabi nga ni Chris, eh, love, love, love lang. Diba? Uh, now, finally, uh, another form of which benefit is the 13th month pay. Now, this has long been implemented by President Marcos, presidential decree pa siya, uh, which covers all rank and file workers who work for at least uh, one month during calendar year. Now, ang tanong, eh, sir, paano kung two months lang nag-work or one month lang? Entitled ba sa 13th month? Yes. But the 13th month pay will be computed accordingly. How do you compute that? So take note of this, no? One, oh, oh, 1 over 12 of the total basic salary. So kung ang salary mo, uh, 1,200, 1 over 12, so entitled sa 100 pesos. Kung naka 1 month ka. Kung naka 2 months ka, 200 pesos. So forth and so on. So proportionate ang iyong share. So pag natanggal ka sa trabaho, middle of the year, are you entitled to a 30th month pay? The answer is yes, but it has to be uh, computed proportionately. And uh, likewise, uh, take note that in the computation of uh, the basic way, it includes all remunerations or earnings. So all. Ang um, hindi lang included dyan, uh, yan, yung mga unused vacation, leave overtime, cola, yan. Uh, these are not included, yung mga allowances and monetary benefits as follows. No? So take note again, I invite your attention to the computation proportionate to the length of time work. So basic salary na covered divided by 12 times is equal to the proportionate 13 month. Ngayon, kung naka 12 months ka, so 12 over 12 would be 1, then equivalent na dun sa salary mo. Kaya, ayan, take note of that. No? Total basic salary. Now, uh, lastly, no, there is also this so-called, of course, retirement pay. No? And what is this retirement pay? Of course, if you're retired or retired it, as they say, you become entitled. But there are optional retirement uh, and there are compulsory retirement now, I'd like to invite your attention to, to this law, no? Kasi ito, meron na tayo ng Anti-Age Discrimination Act. So, you cannot be discriminated by reason of age. But I'd like to really, uh, well, my my thesis is that uh, the Anti-Age Discrimination should cover also retirement. Eh. Uh, you know why we have become so unstable in our system here? Kasi often, lalo na sa Supreme Court, Pag naging, although 70 years ang retirement, compulsory, nagpapalit palit, no? Even if you could still work. Now, uh, given that right now, uh, medyo late ang, ano, uh, madaming late bloomers and all that, dapat talaga itong retirement should be extended accordingly, no? Uh, to my mind, this uh, retirement should, uh, there should not be any retirement cap anymore as long as you can work it should be given the option should be given to the 
worker if you re really want to truly protect them. Kasi kahit 60 ka na, but you can, you're still functional, dapat allowed ka pa rin magtrabaho. I hope someday uh, a law will be passed that would declare illegal the capping of a retirement. Kasi kung kaya mo pa magtrabaho eh. So this should be an option not on the part of the employer but on the employee. With exceptions, of course, to those industries that uh, where age is really or where age would really matter. No? For example, construction company. Eh, talaga naman kung medyo 60 na, mahirap na magtrabaho yun. So, now, by the way, can, is it possible to have an early optional retirement program? Again, we go back as long as it is, uh, it is uh, beneficial to the to the uh, worker. I mean, there is no law that should prohibit that, no? So, kung sa kanya, sa uh, industry, eh, 50 lang, pwede ka na mag-optional retirement, pwede. O kaya, 5 years of service, pwede pa. Okay then. Otherwise, this rule will have to be applied. So, optional, 60%, at least naka 5 years. Uh, pag walang retirement plan. On 65, kung compulsory. Now, how do you compute the retirement pay? Well, don't complicate things. Just use uh, this uh, this one, you know, uh, 22.5 days. That's based on the case of capital wireless versus Contisor. So that's the uh, uh, multiplier, 22.5 days per year of service. Now, if there's a retirement plan, as I said earlier, uh, it should not be less than what the retirement law is as amended. So, kailangan yun uh, higher than RA 7641. And it should include also some other uh, provisions in proportionate 13th month pay and so forth and so on. That ends our discussion on wages. Uh, you may opt to uh, ask questions and post it so that we can answer them accordingly. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you don't mind the background. I am right now in Naga City. I came all the way from Manila, then Naga, then uh, Legaspi. So, kaya may naririnig kayong mga manok at tila, tila ok ng manok in the, the life. So, thank you very much uh, for listening to the lecture.